This is a scenario, Bill, where inflation is still the predominant market narrative. Is, thing, is something going to change with today's reading, or do you feel as though the inflation story still has to stay where it is for the Fed? Even if the inflation data were to come in better, and it stays better for a while. Let's remember, it, the Fed has always been telling us they have to be convinced that we're on a downward trajectory toward 2%. And they really mean 2%. Uh, and, and to be convinced, it takes three to five data points to establish a convincing trend. So one data point is just not going to make it. Uh, and, and I think one thing we should watch out for is that so long as service sector inflation stays around 4%, the Fed's not going to be anywhere near uh, willing to uh, take down rates until we see us that come down to a more reasonable level. Bill, the narrative, the story from the Fed has been higher for longer, and it's been that way for as long as we can remember near to medium term. How, wh what exactly does higher for longer mean, and could it be higher, even higher for longer, and, and what could that look like? The real question that people have always been asking is, how is the, me how's the Fed measuring tightness? And when I was on the Fed staff, and, and to even today, uh, everyone is looking at the real rate of interest, the nominal rate adjusted for the rate of inflation. So if the two-year is hanging around close to 5%, and the expected rate of inflation, the five-year break-evens, or however you want to measure it, is somewhere in the two-and-a-quarter range, we have some substantially high real interest rates. And a normal real interest rate is somewhere around three quarters to 1%. So we're well above that. And that's what we mean by tight. And as long as the economy stays that tight, we're going to see a crunch in the interest sensitive sectors like housing and auto sales. In fact, that was the weak area you saw in the GDP report, the downward revision was mainly because the auto finances become so expensive, people just can't afford to buy cars. People can't afford to buy cars. They can also not afford to buy houses. Interest rates, yeah. as you said, are tight. But how do we reconcile that against an economy that still seems to be growing and a job market that seems still to be tight as well, Bill? We have a bifurcated society, Dom. Uh, the people at the top are doing very well. They're the ones who are filling in the airline seats and the business class seats and, and why it is that we see all the foreign tourists uh, uh, abroad, uh, American tourists. What, what we also see is that the people at the medium uh, uh, income levels and, and lower income levels, they're having to take on more and more jobs, multiple jobs, in order to make ends meet. So that stress on the consumer is starting to show up in retail sales, as you mentioned, and also it's going to start showing up in weakening uh, GDP altogether. The weakness in GDP that we saw, by the way, uh, the, the 1.3 number, is in, it's, uh, Pierre Paul has said that that's really a sign of strength because a lot of that weakness came from high imports. People are buying a lot of foreign goods. And, and until the economy starts to slow down to the point where inflation rate starts to come down, and the only way we can get that is through slower consumption, we're not going to see the Fed lower rates.